Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Lord, Heavenly Father God, how grateful we are to you for your great faithfulness in our lives that has brought us thus far. The five months that was rolled on by, each second, each minute, each hour and way that we have experienced your faithful leading in our lives. As we begin another new month, Lord, we come to this holy sanctuary in your very presence to seek your blessings upon us. Speak to us afresh even this morning with the words that bring life, renew our minds, and reach our lives, enlighten us, empower us, as we go into the world to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, I want to greet each one of you on this first day of the month of June that we have entered into. God has been so faithful that he has led us and that we have experienced God's selfless love and His loving kindness and mercy has been our portion. And so we are here with a heart full of gratitude to thank God and also to seek God's guidance, His direction and His blessings as we begin this new month. The psalm that was read to us, Psalm 90, as it's told that it's written by Moses, it is a psalm, it is a prayer that Moses has written. Even the opening hymn that we sang, O God, I help in ages past. The author Isaac Watts has composed this hymn based on Psalm 90. Where the very background that we have to understand of Psalm 90, Moses prays to God in a situation where God's Anger is going to befall the people of Israel. It is the incident that we find in Numbers chapter 13 and 14 where God, through Moses, asked the people of Israel to go and conquer and possess the land which God has promised to them. God says, send your men and go and possess. So Moses comes and he tells the people of Israel, he sends men to go and see the land. And these men go and they kind of take survey of the land and they come back. But the message that they bring is that they are so filled with fear and doubt that they say, we cannot really conquer the land. And they start to grumble. They grumble and murmur to Moses saying, our life would have been far better off if we were left in Egypt. We could have even died there rather than going and conquering and possessing this land. Those people are much stronger, they are larger in number. We cannot do anything, we cannot really conquer and possess. And they go on grumbling, forgetting the promise which God has told them that He is going to be with them. And so we see in Numbers chapter 14, God is angry with the people of Israel. And God rebukes them and he says, I will send the wrath on you. What more should I do to enable you to understand? I have given you signs. You have seen me performing so many wonders. And now when I say I am going to be with you, go and possess the land, yet all that you display 
is doubt and fear, disbelief, not trusting in the one who is calling you. So it is at this time Moses says the prayer. Because Moses knew God well. Moses, as the title itself says, the man of God, he knew God, he trusted God, he knew what it means to depend on God. And that is why he's calling the people of Israel and he's saying this prayer. At the beginning of this Psalm 90, the beginning verses, a reminder of who God is. He says that God is the one who is faithful from everlasting to everlasting. From generations, He has been our dwelling place. He's kind of reminding the Israelites, it is this God who has seen our sufferings and He has intervened in our lives to lead us from the bondage, from the slavery, to liberate us and to see that we reach the promised land. And He has been our dwelling place in our journey in the wilderness. He has seen us through. And He is a faithful one and not just for one generation, but generations after generations, from everlasting to everlasting, He has been our dwelling place. A God who is a faithful God. And He is not only a God who is a faithful one, He is a God who is eternal. As we read through those verses, there is a contrast that Moses brings here between the frailty, the mortality, the fragility of human life against a God who is immortal, a God who is eternal, a God who is everlasting, a God who is beyond time. The human beings, we always are under and controlled by time. Our life, the lifespan is limited. As the psalm says, it is either 70 or 80. But then even those years are full of toil and struggles. But for God, He is the one who existed even before the mountains were made, even before the earth was formed. He is God eternal, from everlasting to everlasting He reigns. He is beyond time. But on the other hand, human beings, we are mortal. We are feeble. We are weak in our nature. And that is why he says, we are like the grass, the flower, that blossoms in the morning, but by the evening it withers away. That is our nature. That is human beings, the limited beings that we are. But we have a God who is eternal, a God who is faithful, a God who is beyond time. It is this God who is called and He has called you to go and conquer and possess the land where the Israelites, they fear, they are full of disbelief, they doubt what God is telling them. They doubt the promises of God. We must have heard of the story to told of a man who was standing at the edge of the cliff and crying out, Is there anybody out there who can help me? I'm standing at the edge. Is there anybody out there who can help me? And there comes the voice which says, stretch out your hand, take a leap. Stretch out your hand and take a leap. But the man trembles, he would not do that. Many times, this is our experience as well. 
we tremble to take that leap of faith that will enable us to trust in God who is standing there and calling us and telling us take that leap of faith I'm here to help you. That is what we see in the light of these lights. They see their enemies. They see their they are stronger and larger in number. That is what frightens them. But they fail to keep their focus on the God who is calling a God who is faithful, who has been leading them thus far through all the very struggles and experiences, the wilderness experience and all of that, God has been providing for them. His presence has been leading them. But they fail to acknowledge. They see the enemies and they fail to understand that God is more powerful. And hence we see God's anger verses 7 following a holy God a God who is a faithful one a God who is the eternal is a God who is the holy one where there is the presence of the holy God there cannot be the presence of evil or sin that is what we see here God in his anger he tells how long will these people behave in this manner? How long will they remain disloyal? How long will they follow their own ways, their evil ways, not putting their trust in the God who made the covenant with them? How long will they keep and put their trust in everything else? How long would they live their lives in this kind of a sin? Even after I have showed them, performed all the signs and wonders that they have seen, yet their lifestyle has not changed. They have not put the trust in the Holy One. And hence, I am going to come up against them. My wrath is going to come up against them. Moses says this prayer, Lord, you are the Holy One who can stand in your presence. There cannot be holiness and unholiness existing at the same time. And then we see verses 10 following. There is a sequence of petitions that Moses prays on behalf of the people of Israel. He begins by saying, Teach us to number our days, O God. Teach us to number our days. It means that we who are fragile, we who are limited beings, we are called to daily dependent on God. It is only by depending on God, by trusting in God, that we will be able to walk in the ways of God. It is not just as we calculate the years. You know when somebody is celebrating the birthday, we ask, how old are you? And it is calculated by the year. But here we see Moses says his prayer, teach us to number our days, O Lord, one day at a time, daily depending on God. And then he says, in order that we might have a heart of wisdom, a heart that is diligent to walk in the ways of the Lord. That's what even Psalm is David sang. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart let it be pleasing unto you, O Lord. Even Solomon writing the Proverbs, he says, Let my heart be diligent to obey your word. Because 
from the heart flows the springs of life. So heart is a very, very important, the major matter in our life. What we store in our heart is very important. Teach us to number our days, O oh Lord, that, our, that I might have, I might gain a heart of wisdom. Wisdom here meaning it is knowing God, having that personal relationship with God. It is revering God, it is fearing God, because the fear of the Lord is wisdom. It is having that intimate relationship, that close walk with God. Every day, day by day, I walk with God. Lord, I need you on a daily basis. I'm dependent on you day by day. Every hour, I need you, Lord. That is the cry of the heart here. That I might have a heart of wisdom. Then the petition follows. A petition for God's mercies and God's compassion, God's steadfast love. He says, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. Again, you see, a heart crying out to God, daily depending on God. Every morning, Lord, we need you. Every morning, we need to experience your steadfast love, your compassion in our lives. And then finally, the petition is, let me find favor in your sight. Let the work of my hands find favor in your sight. Apart from God, apart from God's favor on our lives and all that we do, we cannot do anything. Our life is impossible without God's favor resting upon us. Moses experienced this, Moses understood this because Moses knew who he was as a human being and who God was. And hence he prays to God saying, let your servants find favor in your sight. Let the work of their hands find favor in your sight. Dearly beloved, the people of God, even as we have begun another new month, having come into the presence of God, let this be our prayer. Daily depending on God, guarding our hearts, praying to God for a heart of wisdom, a heart that would know God, a heart that would long to walk with God, a heart that would look up to God every morning, every day, longing for His compassion and His steadfast love to lead us, and submitting all that we do into His hands in order that He would bless us with this favor. To that end, may the good Lord lead each one of us, and may the blessings of God be upon us.